Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Donna Bungard. Um, I am the Senior Accessibility Program Manager over at Indeed. I am a fair-skinned, dark-haired woman with dark glasses and a bright red shirt. And um, my pronouns are she, her. And as an accessibility program manager and, and career accessibility individual here, I've dedicated my life to advocating for better inclusion in the workplace. Um, I get to work with also Billion Strong as one of their global advisors to help am amplify the voices of people with disabilities. And I'm a member of the disability community myself. I'm deeply honored to chair this session. The idea of empowering young people with disabilities for entrepreneurship speaks directly to my professional, well, focus, mantra, goals, because it's full of possibilities. It's taking goals and turning them into actional pathways forward and creating opportunities to operationalize inclusion from earlier stages. Together here, we're gonna go on a bit of a journey and we're going to take a look at certain things that we're going to we're going to see themes basically we're going to understand that there are commonalities amongst all of these powerful projects so the first thing is obviously opportunities we need opportunities for people with disabilities especially young people with disabilities to carve their own way and choose a path that makes sense for them that makes them brings them joy in their work we need to talk about enablement, enabling people to be able to take, take advantage of these opportunities. What are the logistics? What do we need? Where do we need to go from here? Empowerment for choice. Empowerment is choice, the choice to decide where do we want to go? How do we want to get there? It's about respecting the autonomy of young people to choose the work life they want to have. Dignity, recognizing the independence of thought and their des independent desires and moving forward. And finally, sustainability, because none of us are here to help one or two people. We want to make systemic changes that are going to have impact across borders, across disability identities, across intersectional identities. So today, I encourage you all to lean on in, get engaged, get thinking, get excited by what we're seeing here together. So our speakers are going to introduce themselves uh, a little more effectively, but I would like to officially welcome um, Anthony, Eleth, Jessica, Krista, Marna, and Sharon. Um, Marna was able to join us after the slide was made. Sorry there. Um, but I'm really excited to hear from each of them. Because in the end, I'm hoping we're going to come away from this with a better understanding of not only training youth with disabilities, but training by youth with disabilities. As I'm sure everyone in this room is aware, the disabilities justice movement has been nothing about us without us and has actually grown to just nothing without us because there is nothing without this community we're going to take away from here concepts of leadership and mentoring understanding and how youth housing services can help how self-employment support can work and how there is student-led innovation on inclusion So really at the end of it, it comes down to this. Preparing our youth for success, not because of, or certainly not in spite of their disabilities, but because of all of the beautiful stories, understanding and perspectives that come from their lived experiences. You know, in, in my day to day, I am very privileged to, to get to work with wonderful people to break down barriers that prevent people from having a successful work life. When we're talking 
about work lives, we're not only talking about showing up for eight hours a day, it impacts every aspect of our lives. It, it impacts how we view the world and sometimes how the world sees us. I genuinely believe in the powers of projects like the ones that we're gonna hear from today. I believe in the power of work to create better lives for individuals. And I believe in the power of our youth to be able to change the narrative around disability and entrepreneurship. So with that, as much as I'm sure you're all here to see me, yeah, you're laughing. I hear you. I heard you laughing. It's okay. My ego will get over it. <laughs> um, next up, I believe we're going to hear from Jessica. I think. So I'm going to hand this over. And excuse us for a moment while we do a little bit of a musical chairs act, but Are we good? All righty. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon a, a todos e a todas. Uh, eu sou uma mulher, uma, uma mulher branca, de cabelos castanhos e lisos, olhos verdes e uso óculos. Eu sou vestida de uma, uma blusa verde e casaco. So, I'm going to translate for... I'm going to translate uh, Jessica's uh, speaking. So good afternoon to everyone. And I'm a white uh, woman with uh, long uh, wave black uh, hair. I use uh, glasses and I'm wearing right now a uh, uh, green uh, blouse. Agradeço aos organizadores dessa conferência o convite para participar deste evento importante, um, como parte Zero, zero Project Youth Delection. And I'd like right now to thank all the organizers, the organizing uh, of this conference. Uh, and I'd like to thank for the invitation to be here, to be part of this such an important event as the Zero Project uh, Youth uh, Conference Youth Delegation. Eu vou falar sobre, sobre os desafios de inclu, sem incluída, meu ativismo e o desenvolvimento da liderança com deficiência. And I'm going to speak today about the challenges of being included, about my activism and about the development of leadership of uh, young people with disabilities. Eu sou resultado da, da escola inclusiva. I'm the result of the inclusive uh, school. Essa foi uma decisão da minha família. Quer dizer, uma decisão acertada da minha família. E esse é o ponto de partir de tudo que eu vou falar. So, I'm the result of the inclusive school and that was the best decision that my family could ever taken because that was the starting point for everything that I am right now and uh, the starting point for everything that I'm going to speak uh, today. As dificuldades que eu e minha família passamos para eu estudar em uma escola comum. 
Interesse no mercado de trabalho foram muitas. And the difficulties that my family had to face in a daily life so that I could be in an inclusive, so in an inclusive school and also be part of the labor uh, market, they were huge. Eu superei discriminação e rejeição que experimentei. And I have uh, overcome all the discrimination and all the rejection that I have suffered. Eu gostaria muito que pessoas como eu não sofressem o que eu sofri. And I really would like everyone like me didn't go to the same process of discrimination and rejection that I had to go through. Só porque tem uma deficiência. Just because I have a disability. Na foto, eu apareço com colegas de classe após um trabalho em grupo. And in the picture shown here, I'm just here with my colleagues, my school peers, after uh, working, uh, a work in a group. Se as dificuldades não tivessem sido enfrentadas, If the, this, these uh, challenges and if these difficulties have not been faced, eu não seria quem eu sou hoje. I wouldn't be the person that I'm today. Uma mulher feliz, a happy woman, realizada profissionalmente, a woman that feels professionally uh, fulfilled. E e sabe a importância da luta por direitos. And who, who knows really the importance of the fight for the rights. Nas fotos, estou trabalhando na Secretaria Nacional dos Direitos das Pessoas com Deficiência e palestrando no Senado Federal. And in the two pictures shown here, in one of them I'm working at the National Secretary for the Rights of People with a Disability and I'm also giving a speech at the Senate. O meu ativismo começou ainda na adolescência. Uh, I became my activism when I was still a teenager. Percebi cedo que precisava lutar para exercer meus direitos. And I realized since very young that I really need to fight in order to have my rights uh, uh, become a reality. Especi especialmente de estar nos lugares em que as pessoas em geral estudam trabalham e, fre e frequentam. And I also had to fight especially for my right to be in the very same place that people in general, they go to in order to study, in order to work, and in order just to be around. É muito, é muito difícil enfrentar as barreiras comunicacional. É muito difícil enfrentar as barreiras na comunicação e na informação e as barreiras atitudinais atitudinais que existem em meu país. And it's really very, very difficult to face the barriers of communication, of uh, attitudes, and about the lack of information, which is part of our daily life in Brazil, in our country. A sociedade considera que as pessoas com deficiência intelectual não têm capacidade para trabalhar, não podem namorar, casar, Voltar, morar sozinhas. And uh, unfortunately, the Brazilian society does not consider people with disability that they have the capacity to work, to date, to vote, to get married, to live alone, and even to have a life by their own. By their own. Tem uma vida como outra pessoa qualquer. It means to have a life as each one of us. No Brasil, sobra capacitismo e a falta de acessibilidade e inclusão. In Brazil, unfortunately, we face ableism and the lack of accessibility and inclusion. É, é, e é por isso que precisamos conhecer nossos direitos para lutar todos os dias para se concretizar. And that's why it's so important that we fight every day for our rights and that we get to know them and that we fight for them so that we can uh, have them uh, fulfilled. 
Na foto, eu apar... Ou... Oh. Na foto, eu apareço em um telão em uma audiência pública na Câmara dos Deputados. In these pictures, I show up in a big screen in a public uh, uh, audience uh, during uh, in the deputy cameras. Pensando na importância da política pública, política e cidadã das pessoas, das pessoas com deficiência, e que criei em 2016. Para minha mãe, um grupo com 18 pessoas com síndrome de Down de todo o Brasil. And it was exactly by thinking of the importance in the participation in politics and also as a citizen, um, a citizen uh, as a person with a, a disability that I've created in 2016 together with my mom, uh, we got together a group of 18 persons with Down syndrome from all over the country, from all over Brazil. Os encontros do Grupo Nacional de Autodefensoria contribuíram para que essas pessoas conhecessem os seus direitos e deveres. And the meetings, the gathering of this national group of self-advocacy, they contributed a lot so that the people could get to know the rights and the uh, and what the rights and their dues, what they the rights and what they have to do. Yeah. Fossem empoderadas e tornar-se protagonistas das suas vidas. And also the uh, importance of getting to know the rights and the rules, it's so important because then they could get empowered and they really could get uh, to become the protagonists of their own lives. Tivemos a ideia também de criar grupos semelhantes em vários estados do Brasil. And we had the great idea of creating uh, similar groups in different states uh, of Brazil. Para que mais pessoas com a trissomia do cromossomo 21 pudessem se tornar autodefensora. And we created those other groups because we realized that uh, by doing so, more and more people with the trissomy 21, they could uh, become self-advocators. Em, em 2019, o trabalho de autodefensoria que idealizamos foi assumido pela Federação Brasileira de Síndrome de Down. And uh, after some years of working in those groups, in 2019, the group of the self-advocacy uh, that we have idealized at the beginning, it was then taken over by the Brazilian Federation of Down Syndrome. Organização a qual me dediquei por, por muitos anos. And uh, I, I really got involved in this activity for several years. Uh, we, we have just two minutes. Ah, gente, só tem mais dois minutinhos, ok? Uh -huh. Tá, ok. Ok, então está tapando. Neste slide, há um mapa do Brasil e as fotos dos autodefensores de cada estado em 2018. And here uh, you can see in these pictures uh, the map of Brazil and uh, the self-advocators uh, uh, related to each state uh, of Brazil. Além de coordenar autodefensores por sete anos, também participei de várias formações, concursos na secretaria, e a de agente de promoção de acessibilidade. And uh, besides coordinating the self uh, uh, advocacy for seven years, I always have participated in several courses. And uh, like, for instance, the course uh, promoted by the secretariat and uh, in order to become an agent of uh, accessibility, for promoting accessibility. Na foto, estou nessa formação. And in these pictures that you can see, I'm just uh, participating in this, uh, uh, in this uh, course. Yeah, sorry. Atualmente, atualmente, sou conselheira consultiva da Escola de Vinte e fui indicada por essa organização para representá-la no Conselho Nacional da Juventude. Uh, at the present moment, I'm the 
consult uh, the consultative advisor of Scholar Gigenti School of uh, of People, and I have been indicated by the Scholar Gigenti in order to represent them here in the National Council of Youth. O exercício dessas funções é a participação frequente da liderança que passei a exercer. And the exercise of these roles and of those functions, and also the participation, the frequent participation in political events, they contributed a lot for my leadership that I could. Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you so much. This is amazing. I know we're a bit at time and we have a lot of presenters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend um, just listening to you here and talking to you in the hall. You're remarkable. Um, and I would love to hear more. But I would like to give our other presenters a few more minutes, mm -hmm. um, their, their minutes as well. So what we'll do is we'll come back if we have, and we do have questions for you already. I know that. Então é o seguinte, eles agora eu preciso. O tempo já terminou para que outros possam ter a chance de falar, mas ele tem certeza que depois eles já têm perguntas para fazer para você depois, ok? Fica tranquilo. Next, we'll be hearing from Anthony from Enable India. Good afternoon, everyone, and good evening. I'm Anthony Helen Wright Silver Rights. I'm an ecosystem made person. I'm very honored to represent Enable India. Enable India works for economic independence and dignity of persons with disability across. Enable India always believe in a power of collective and self-power, which we called as Sveshakti. I am from India, the land of unity in diversity. Sveshakti Mission 100K, which aims to create one lakh rural entrepreneurs with disability across India by developing sustainable ecosystem. I like to start with uh, the small mathematical uh, calculation. I'm not good in math. I'm not a uh, uh, master's in maths, also mathematics. So number eight divided by two. So number eight divided by two. So everyone knows the answer is four. The same number eight, if we divide vertically, we'll get two threes. We can make 33 out of each. The same eight, if we divide horizontally, we'll get two zeros. We can make hundred thousands or more. So this is what Enable India always focus, finding the possibilities within and maximize the, maximize the impact. My presentation also focus on that. So I like to introduce Saubhagya, who is a person with hearing impaired. She's a deaf person. She didn't know proper sign language. She was depending on her mother for 27 years. So this was the situation uh, before Enable India's Sveshakti intervention. Same like Saubhagya, we have 2.5 million uh, PWDs are in India. So based on Enable India's learning and experience, so we have the PWDs are in rural, often waiting for 35 years to get first livelihood opportunities. After Sushakti intervention, Saubhagya created livelihood opportunities for her entire family. She has employed eight people. So she runs a catering as well as fishing also. So per capita in India is in dollars 2069. Saubhagya earns three times more than that. And she won best deaf entrepreneur of the year 2023 also. How Enable India made this transformation? So Enable India adopts a three-layered approach to bring systemic changes and ensure sustainability in the development of entrepreneurship for persons with disability within the mainstream. So our city is a rural self-employment training institute, which comes under the Ministry of Rural Development. The first layer is mainstreaming rural self-employment training institute. The second layer is support system, so partners in uh, ecosystem, unlocking the services and benefits. 
And third layer is the Garuse approach, so ecosystem building. Garuse means with pride for livelihood creation and the capacity building. Because disability need the depth intervention, our Garuse approach, the ecosystem building approach will cover this. So all the three layers will cover and we used the five mantras, which called us five mantras, set up, build, operate, transfer, and sustain. So Saubhagya got benefited by completing entrepreneurship development program in rural self-employment training institutes. So mainstreaming self-employment program for persons with disability with Indian-wide government-led institute called RCTs. So there is a structure uh, which comes from the Ministry of Rural Development, national level, state level, and the district level. National level, we have the NAR, National Academy of RCTs, and National Center of Excellence for RCTs. And state-wise, there is a directors, and district-wise, there is a trainers and the training institute called RCTs. So curriculum for PWDs are mainstreamed in National Academy, and the same made to a circular and sent to all 590 training institutes across India. And the directors are sensitized on disability. And the trainers undergone the capacity building program. And we made the, we are enabled India about the Garcia partners, identifying the grassroots level organizations who, who are the connect on the ground to build the ecosystem for persons with disabilities and closely work with the RCTs. So mainstreaming made possible through Garuse and the support system approach. So Garuse is a human-centric approach where Enable India identified and collaborate with the grassroots level organization to build a sustainable ecosystem to through the, the our grassroots level organization will collaborate with the various stakeholders to leverage their expertise and for the empowerment of persons with a disability. The system will work with the training institute called RCTs in the grassroots level very closely. And the Garcia partners and Enable India will form the support system with various stakeholders, which called us Enabler Committee in the grassroots level. And district level, we call us the Influencers Group. The Enabler Committee members have recommended uh, Saubhagya to Garuse. And Saubhagya has undergone the pre-training workshop called Margadarshi, where she had an agency to choose and make decision for herself by using the various Enable India made tools called OMI, My Treasurer, and My Decider. Then she has completed the entrepreneurship development program. Then after that, she has connected with the established ecosystem through the enabler committee and the influencers in the district level. And the partners in the ecosystem, the supporters, they've enabled the services to set up the business. And we have the uh, solar refrigerators given from the Selco Foundation, those are the partners in the ecosystem. And for the credit linkage support, so Rangde Foundation, who are the partners in the ecosystem, they have provided the credit linkage support and ensure everything is made possible. So in Garuse approach, so everyone is countable and everyone is accountable also. The impact of Enable India's social team, every single day, every day, five PWDs are becoming an entrepreneur. So every entrepreneurs we have developed across 15 types of disabilities. Same like Saubhagya, 40% of the entrepreneurs are women with disabilities. And 20% of the entrepreneurs are doing the multiple businesses. Same like Saubhagya. And 10% of the entrepreneurs are got married because of the financial independence. So what impact we have created in the rural disability sector of India? So all 590 RCTs, the training institutes, started to include persons with disability in entrepreneurship development program. And our entrepreneurs are self-employed across 141 trades. And 45 different types of stakeholders are aligned and supporting for the entrepreneurship of persons with disabilities. And the developing entrepreneurs across 11 states and one union territory through 40 Garuse centers across India. The scaling gives economy of scale, the 40 percentage reduction in the cost also from the third year. So the impact is high when the ecosystem works together. The impact is high when the ecosystem work with the existing system. The impact is high when the persons with disabilities are co-creator and the problem solver, and they have the agency to choose and make decision for their life. Thank you. Shukriya, Danyavad, 
நன்றி நனி அண்ட் குரு தக் நாத் ஸோ தேங்க்ஸ் இன் வேரியஸ் லாங்குவேஜஸ் ஆஃப் இந்தியா தேங்க் யூ Next, we'd like to welcome Elif to share Steps That Change. Good afternoon. Uh, this is Elif uh, representing Steps That Change. Uh, I'm with my teammates here and online. Uh, first of all, I am so happy to be with so many inspiring activists and change makers. Uh, before going over my presentation, I'll describe myself as a 30 years old woman uh, with dark hair, wearing black dress uh, with white tulips on it. Uh, today, I will briefly talk about the effects of small steps that makes all of us really believe that we can really change the world. Steps Then Change uh, is a non-profit and non-governmental organization located in Turkey. Our ultimate aim is to create the co-living culture uh, where all differences such as disability, gender, sexual orientation, religious beliefs are accepted and appreciated. To do so, we focus on two areas. First, diversity and inclusion. When I searched the term in Google, there are 1.7 billion results showed up. This simply means that everybody is talking about it. So we know that diversity and inclusion steer our conversation, determine our strategies, and shape our behaviors. Secondly, we know that today's youth will be today's and tomorrow's leaders, policymakers, innovators. So youth empowerment is essential to have an impact on future. In our main program, Campus of Colors, we create a co-working space for high school and university students, both with and without disabilities. In this space, we raise socially responsible leaders and entrepreneurs through personal development, career preparation and leadership skills. We eliminate the inequality that young people with disability face to access these kind of educational programs. In a diverse and inclusive environment, young people get a chance to have mutual understanding and respect because they have an opportunity to uh, look through the eyes of each other. Campus of Colors is the first program in Turkey where students from different backgrounds come and work with NGOs and have employment opportunities later on. At three angles, we keep this as a cutting-edge program. First, we work with natural-born leaders and we empower them to be uh, leaders in the future. Second, we believe the uh, power of peer-to-peer -peer education. In a conservative society, it's quite unusual uh, to have a mindset without hierarchy. Third, we join forces with several entities. We work with NGOs, uh, universities and high schools, public institutes and private sectors. We unify these parties to share experiences and learn from each other uh, to have an impact on civil society. So far, I explain who we are and what we are doing for youth, and I, I would like to talk more about how we are creating the change. As a result of this program, more and more young people become socially and financially independent. We currently have more than 400 graduates who are more self-confident than before. 
When we look at the numbers, 65% of them are women and 35% of them are uh, with disability. The students show the improvement in their grades and we pave the way for all of them to have a decent employment opportunities. Our alumni become the ambassadors of our social values as well. The impact analysis that we conducted shows that 83% of our alumni keeps engaging with civil work. For example, some of them learn sign language and some of them make audio descriptions to prepare blind students for their exams. Some of them build even uh, startups and consultants agencies for accessibility, such as Blind Look and Accessibility for All, uh, whom uh, were invited last, last year's uh, Zero Conference. Being an NGO, our financing and sustainability relies on our strong network uh, and volunteers. We raise funds by donations, sponsors and fundraising events such as charity runs. Uh, we started Campus of Colors with university students in 2015. After getting experience in this area, we use our expertise uh, and we extended it uh, to high school students in 2022. So far, we have organized 11 university programs and four high school programs. This structure as a whole allows all stakeholders to engage and this makes us self-sufficient in terms of resource management. As for what we can do next, we see the opportunity to get to know every member of Zero Family, build networks and explore the possibility of working together. I hope that our program is uh, our program inspired you as we are inspired by yours. We believe that Campus of Colors is an impactful work. Therefore, we would like to extend its borders beyond Turkey. It could be great to see that young people from all around the world come together, discuss ideas, find solutions and make the world a better place in youth camps, uh, workshops designed like Campus of Colors. To sum up, we, ho we hope that the award from Zero Project and the chance to be here today will open a new door to us. I'll finish my presentation with our motto, let's change our world to change the world. Thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you so much, Vila. Now, joining us remotely, and I apologize for not mentioning at the beginning, is hey, is, is hey. Um, there you are. Hiya. Hi, welcome. You ready to roll? I'm good to go. Howdy, um, everybody. Um, I'll start by um, describing that I am joining um, in a colorful office background. Um, I am a white person with bleach blonde hair, um, brown glasses, and a blue t-shirt. Um, and I'd also like to acknowledge that I'm coming in from the stolen land of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation. And I'd like to pay my respects to elders present and throughout history and affirm that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Um, I'm Iz, I use he, they pronouns. Um, it is currently 1.23 a.m. for me. Um, so I appreciate you having me. Um, and I am a disabled, queer and trans young person um, who has the privilege of working at White Us with a bunch of other awesome disabled young people making programs for disabled young people. White Us is the Youth Disability Advocacy Service and we work with disabled young people aged 12 to 25 to achieve their human rights. At White Us, disability as a definition is expansive. If someone identifies as disabled, that's all they need from us um, in order to be able to access our services. We follow the social model of disability that says we are disabled by society, not by our own individual impairments or conditions. That way we can ensure people have access to the work we do without needing to have access to things like diagnoses, which can be um, difficult to access. We'll go to the next slide um, and I'll talk about together. Um, Together is a four hour access and inclusion training for organisations and workers who do or want to work better with disabled young people. 
Our entire team are disabled people um, and we followed an in-depth co-design process where our disabled young facilitators created and deliver the entire training. We are funded by a grant from the Australian Department of Social Services and this money helped us redesign the training and deliver 40 free training sessions over the last two years. It also helped us develop our own fee-for-service model for the training so we can continue to deliver it after our grant funding ends. We teach through lived experience storytelling because we know storytelling and stories are much more likely to convince someone to change or act than just statistics alone. We have innovative and practical interactive activities and sessions, and we offer ongoing implementation to support to people who complete our training. It was designed to be fully interactive online um, and model what accessible um, spaces can actually look like in our own facilitation. Jumping to the next slide. Um, Together training has a two pronged impact, both for the organizations and workers who've completed our training, but also the disabled young people, both in our team, but also the community. Nearly 2000 workers have completed our training. At least 95% of participants feel confident working and communicating with disabled young people, planning accessible events, implementing inclusion in their work, finding resources and understanding access needs. This level of confidence is significantly higher to what it was pre-training. For the disabled people, the real people who are most important to us in our project um, has been seen especially in our entire disabled young led team. They've all built their skills and career development with lots of them going on to take other roles, both at WIDAS and at other organisations in the community and disability sectors. I am one of those people um, and WIDAS's Young Leaders Program won a Zero Award last year and I completed that program when I was a teenager and I'm grateful that that set me up for the role that I have today. Moving to the next slide, we've had a lot of success with our program. We teach about access keys and social scripts in our training. And those are tools that are now being developed and utilized across the youth and community sectors in different contexts. Sometimes we'll see them at organizations that we haven't run training for, but they've heard about it from other organizations. The impact keeps continuing across the sector. We've also been able to develop WIDAS's lived experience social enterprise program with our facilitators being able to use their expertise to help organizations with other work to make their spaces more accessible for disabled young people. And our disabled young team members have made huge success. I might be biased because I help hire them, but they are some of the coolest, most incredible young people that I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Um, on the next slide, um, we are continuing to use our innovation and disabled led design processes to develop more training, workshop and program offerings for audiences of workers and disabled young people. A few focuses are neurodivergence, queerness, accessible education, leadership, goal setting and self advocacy. We've also designed a process for hybrid and in-person training delivery that builds the skills of organisations to be accessible from the beginning of the planning process. This makes sure that the spaces are accessible to us um, as facilitators. It means I don't show up to a space and then find out it's not wheelchair accessible um, and can't get in. But it also means that they've already proven that they can do access and inclusion. Our program is pretty cool. I am probably very biased because um, it is mine, but it's a real privilege to get to see the impact that we have on young disabled people and hold a space with all of you all today. You can find out more by scanning the QR code and going to our website or emailing me. I actually really love emails. Um, I'm autistic and emails um, give me joy when I get notifications. So feel free to email me at together at whiteus.org.au and thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us and for that incredible speech or talk. Um, Krista, are you ready to roll? Yeah. Think. <laughs> All the details. <clears throat> Hello. OK. Before uh, anything, I want to say hello uh, to the youngsters who are uh, watching this in Hungary because I see them on the panel. 
Sziasztok! Nagyon szépen köszönöm nektek azt, hogy itt lehetek, mert nélkületek nem lennék itt. My name is Krista. Uh, I wear glasses now because I want to see the audience. Without that it would not be possible. I'm 47 years old um, with kind of longish messy hair and a shaky voice because I'm nervous to speak. I'm also a member of the disabled community. This is the first time that I say this. And it was only yesterday that I told my boss about this, that, and also I told her yesterday that I did not want to have this job. <laughs> this job which I am doing already for uh, three years. <laughs> Uh, I did not want to have the job because I thought that um, I will not be able to do my job properly because of my uh, difficulties, because of my life difficulties that I face. So I went for the interview with uh, thinking, you know, like we just make friends, maybe I will do a training and that's the end of the story. Instead of that, somehow I changed my mind and I started uh, the youth house that I'm going to speak about now. This youth house was made uh, from nothing uh, by me and my colleagues and by the youngsters that I represent here today. And uh, it's something that I'm really proud of, I can say. For the people who are in the room, I would like that you raise your hand if as a youngster you had emotional difficulties anytime. Okay, thank you. If you are in the room, I would like that you raise your hand if you had no idea what or who you want to be. Thank you. If you are in the room, I would like you to raise your hand if uh, you had like life difficulties, any kind that you thought is very difficult to come over. Mm -hmm. Welcome, you can join our youth house, all of you, yeah? <laughs> because these are actually the criteria in our youth house uh, to join. We do not ask for diagnosis, we do not ask for disability. Usually the youngsters come to us with different motivation, different background and different ideas, and they are all welcome. So it's really impossible for them to join. Why we can do this is because the association that I am representing here has like 30 years of experience. You have to know this is super unique in Hungary because most of the NGOs does not live that long in Hungary. So there is this uh, long uh, background and uh, tradition of the of the foundation that we can uh, uh, provide our services uh, like that. And you also have to know that uh, I'm working on the youth, for personally, youth field personally for 20 years, so I also have a bit of knowledge from the youngsters like that way. Mm. For the youth house, we had like these smart uh, ideas and big uh, ideas, but actually uh, what built the youth house uh, was the youngsters that we work with because we did not start the work uh, based only on our ideas, but we had a big research uh, run in 2019 where youngsters were involved, their family were also involved and also caretakers were involved because we really wanted to start from a point uh, that we work from the needs, not from our ideas, but from the needs which are present. And actually this is still going on. So next Monday, to be precise, I'm going to meet with the youngsters again and ask for their needs. What do they want for this year? Obviously, I have ideas, I have plans and programs, but I'm going to meet them on Monday again and see what is it that they ask for. Mm, our objective was uh, that we work with youngsters uh, with different type of uh, difficulties and then we somehow help them to find a work placement or employment for themselves, which was successful by our uh, understanding because like 30% of the youngsters that we work, that, uh, work with uh, found employment. It might be little, 
thank you. Uh, but uh, it's actually quite a lot in the uh, circumstances that we work with. What I want to uh, really focus on that uh, why we are successful is based on the multidisciplinary cooperation that we work with uh, different professionals so we can have a complex uh, support system for the youngsters. Most of the youngsters do not have like one diagnosis but multiply diagnosis so it's really uh, needed. So it doesn't mean that we have uh, a psychiatrist, for instance, at our foundation, but we are in close cooperation with uh, professionals and also with other foundation or institutions so that we can refer the youngsters to places or to support that they need. But we also have like, um, I don't know, vocation, vocational uh, trainers at the foundation or human uh, resources specialist or myself as a youth worker. So also within our building, we have different uh, uh, professionals. There are a lot of numbers that we are proud of, but uh, mostly I am proud of the personal stories of the youngsters that they are uh, sharing uh, with us. And most of uh, the personal stories are coming um, out of uh, personal development. And then we can move on to the next step, talking about employment. So I can say that our first step usually is that uh, they become in a they reach a state that they are ready for work and then we can find them uh, employment together with them. Yeah. To the key of success, there are many things I, I said, but one that I would uh, really like to uh, say it out loud is that we work with mixed groups. It means that uh, their abilities, their background can be super diverse. So they are not uh, staying within their like usual group of youngsters because in Hungary they go to the same school if they had, um, for example, not seeing, then they go to the same school, but they would not meet up with other uh, youngsters. And also we include youngsters who are apart from the non-disabled uh, community, because this is the way how we believe uh, like the social communication and, uh, and improvement in uh, our country can uh, take uh, uh, a step forward to uh, financing as uh, like most of the uh, organizations who are present here is a question for us as well. So we rely on uh, funds and uh, we also work with uh, companies also to place our youngsters uh, as employees and also to receive uh, support. We have uh, plenty of field uh, to improve ourselves. I'm not going into details uh, for that because it's a long road. So I hope to be back here next year and maybe say about the improvement that we achieved. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, kept raising my hand. I got to see where we, we're going after. Uh, Marna, are you ready? Fantastic. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. I'm a white woman in mid 40s uh, with dark hair. Uh, I'm wearing big glasses um, and uh, I'm from Ukraine. Uh, my hometown was occupied in 2014, and um, two years ago, when Russia started its full-fledged invasion, I, I became externally displaced person. I lived for six months here in Vienna, so I have I have quite warm memories about Austria, and um, I would like to thank you to all Austrian people and Hungarian people about their support. Uh, in uh, I'm from CSI Ukraine. It's non-government organization. And now I um, I'm in Kiev, so I came here from Kiev. And um, uh, in Ukraine, um, in Ukrainian culture, there is such thing as kriza, and now you can see it. It's snack decoration for women, and it actually it has two meanings. The name. Um, of the decoration crisis is of German origin from the word Christ. So it could mean, I'm not an expert in German, but it could mean circle or district. And uh, the Ukrainian word Krisa came from the Greek crisis, means a difficult transitional stage. 
If we combine these two meanings, we can conclude that despite the war in Ukraine, we Ukrainians are creating our own circle that help us to hold on through crisis. We have been fighting for more than um, eight years now, and this week on 20th of February, the world will mark the second uh, anniversary, or I don't know how to say, of Russia's full-scale invasion to Ukraine. And when we talk about circle, the circle is about projects that support people, communities and Ukraine. And today I want to introduce you two projects. One is a logical continuation of another. And these projects are implemented by non-governmental organization and originated by our team. A project of the first one, it is the project of freelance courses for young people with disabilities which we launched a year ago as a part of Unity project implemented by Arux and supported by USAID. This is a project where young people could try their hand in becoming freelancers in creative industries. They could make graphic design, copywriting and video editing. It's so simple, but it's so powerful. So that's why I really would like to share everything we have for perhaps your organizations to start it in your countries. Uh, this project is about developing entrepreneurship and it's about how to make uh, people with disabilities economically active. After Russia, Russia's full-fledged uh, invasion um, to Ukraine, young people with disabilities became even more vulnerable because they were unable to leave uh, to leave some territories, and that's why they happen to be in occupation. And the employment issues uh, have become even more acute as the number of uh, people um, with disabilities are increasing. But we wanted to create programs to promote the economic independence of people with disabilities. That's why we started dialogues with many organizations, with many stakeholders, and we have learned five things. First one, the number of freelancers among young people is growing. And you could see that the majority of among freelancers are young people. Just 71% of freelancers are young people. The second insight, the basis for freelancing is creative industries. For example, design or copywriting, working with tech. Number three, young people with disabilities consider freelancing optimal choice because we saw that many young people are quite shy even to show their photos. That's why we work with them online. Uh, number four, young people are ready to take short-term courses to get new skills. We conducted survey and actually our course last for two months. And number five, and it's not an insight, it's reality. The number of young people with disabilities in, is increasing due to Russian invasion practically every day, because only in January, Russia has had four big attacks on Ukrainian cities. Even this night, it, Ukraine was under attack. So all these findings uh, brought us to the development of the freelance course for young people with disabilities. We have already implemented three programs and next week we will start the fourth one. Totally through the year, we received 1000 applications for the program. We reached 255 young people. 144 of them successfully completed our training. And 25% of them started earning money. And for me and for my team, it's a big victory. And also, we teach them how to work with clients, how to work with orders. We have wonderful participants. This is Alina. The girl on a Ferrari. Uh, and it's how Elena calls her wheelchair. 
Angelina is from Kherson region. Before the full-scale full invasion, she worked as a photographer, doing portraits and family photos. But then she spent nine months in occupation and she couldn't continue doing her photography because she was um, in despair. But then she managed to leave for the safe territory. And after the occupation, she found our course and she became our participant and she started a new period in her life. And this is her words. And you see that nothing will change in the life of an individual or in society if one just sits and complains. So now she has a new dream she, to make a mini film about and edit it herself about the deoccupation of the Kherson region. And the movie will be about her people, about people of her region. Elena tells the same words as our entrepreneurs, because the, another project we have, and it was um, it was written here in Vienna, is um, programs for women entrepreneurs to start or restart their businesses. And uh, after one and a half year of this program, we have trained already 1,000 women entrepreneurs. And this is Marichka, our women entrepreneur. She is a, a girl with disabilities and she completed our course for women entrepreneurs. And after our course, she won the grant of $10,000. And uh, just yesterday I called her and she said, I'm in Germany because I'm a new incubator and we are, we are studying how business in Germany works. So, yes, I'm, I'm uh, so do remember about um, Grisa, I told you. Uh, in our circle, we give people hope, despite the crisis, step by step, bead by bead. We create protection for them and help them, their communities and our country. And our circle is about hope, resilience and faith in new victory. And despite everything, our people, they now help themselves and others by defending the democratic values in Europe. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Sharon. Hi everyone, how are we feeling? It's been a long day, I think, and we've heard some from some really amazing people here today. So my name is Sharon. I am the head of programs with the Australian Disability Network. Uh, and I'm an Indian woman in her late 40s with long black hair and a black dress. Uh, and I've got glasses on. Sorry, I hopefully you can hear me. Uh, and I'll be talking to you about the Directing Change Scholarship Program. OK, we'll start with who we are. And it's a little bit strange because we've been hearing a lot about programs for the youth. <laughs> you, there are some really young aspiring directors. I get that. But this program is really not focused on, on really young people. So I'm just going to put that out there. So starting with who we are, we're an Australian not-for-profit. Uh, and we help organizations engage with and employ people with disability. We build employer capability and we are the employer voice to government, to industry, to community, and it's all about inclusion. Our vision is simple. It's a disability confident Australia. So I'm here to talk about this program and why it was created. So there were some really specific challenges that we were being faced with, and it was about the representation of people with disability in boardrooms. Um, so we, it's not just in Australia, it's uh, across the world. There's not enough people with disability in the boardroom making the decisions that need to be made um, for society. So we wanted to create something that removed the financial restrictions to a quality governance education. We wanted to increase um, the capability, the confidence, the capacity of directors to welcome people with disability into their boardrooms um, and basically increase that representation of people inside a boardroom. So what, what, what's the program? It's a scholarship program. It runs for about eight months through 12 months. 
it gives the a young aspiring leader or any aspiring leader with you know goals to be on a board a governance course that they do with the Australian Institute of Company Directors. They get eight months of a tailored mentoring program where they're matched with an Australian director. Um, and it's practical and relevant guidance that is provided. So some of the benefits around this is that it's delivered over an extended period of time. It really allows for connection and growth between the mentor and the scholar. Um, trying to look at my slides. Um, and it's, yeah, creates opportunities for both the mentors and scholars to learn about um, inclusion. Um, so who's involved in this? We've partnered with the Australian Institute of Company Directors, and they're the largest director membership organization in the world. Um, our mentors are members of the Australian Institute of Company Directors, so they're directors. Um, but our scholars, these are aspiring leaders with disability who are looking for board roles. And it's really awesome. It's a three year pilot program. We're in our third year right now. And looking at the statistics for the first two years of the program, we had over 370 applicants for 37 spaces for a scholarship, a governance scholarship to do a really hard, you know, governance course so they could be um, on that journey into a board role. And the interest from directors to mentor these people has been overwhelming with over 500 applications in two years. So that's pretty awesome. Um, what's really important is, and I, this is what I want to talk about before I play a little video, is the impact. So what's the impact? What's actually changed? We can't just do things for the sake of doing things. We've got to do things that make a difference. Um, so working with the Australian Institute of Company Directors, it's really allowed them to change the way they deliver their programs. So their governance um, uh, programs, which are world class, are accessible and inclusive. Uh, working with the Australian Disability Network, we've reviewed their premises across Australia to make sure that they're accessible. We've um, delivered disability confidence training to their staff as well. So basically for an organisation that is working, you know, to improve the governance uh, of boards in Australia, access and inclusion is business as usual now, which is awesome. For our mentors, by participating in this program as a mentors and being current directors, they're basically taking back this knowledge into their boards. They're having conversations in their boardrooms, in their organizations from the top down about inclusion, uh, which is really, really important. We're also working on a toolkit um, that sort of helps um, these directors and these boards um, about, and it's about access and inclusion. It's a free resource. We're really excited about it and it's gonna be available on our websites in May. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but the biggest thing here is what's changed for our scholars and our, men, um, um, our scholars who have been participating. Sorry, I got distracted by the time. What's awesome is they're getting board roles. That's the bottom line. They are getting board roles. We spoke to um, scholars from our first year, um, from the 11 that we managed to get in touch with. Seven had confirmed that they'd gotten a board role. Two of them were paid board roles. Some of them have multiple board roles. It's awesome. i um, just going to skip now straight into the video, which I hope plays. And you can hear directly from our scholars. <laughs> Thank you. And while they're doing that, I just want to say a quick shout out to my predecessor, Isabel Heiner, who was doing this program before me for all the work that she's done. And our CEO, Corinne Strauss, is, who's sitting out there <laughs> watching me and our program coordinator, Jogan Tomek, who's worked really hard on the scholarship program. Thank you.
Thank you so much. Can we go ahead and Amazing. I know we're a little over time. Thank you for spending a little extra time with us. Um, thank you to this panel. You've all been incredible. Have a wonderful afternoon.